The creative process at Sidley is, is fairly simple. It's a four-stage creative process. Uh, so we have one, two, three, and four. So the way we start is that on the first step, usually clients call at the agency and they have a problem. So we're listening to the problem, listening to the client, and then we gather the right people around the problem. But not only creative or only planning people, but we like to gather always three kind of people around a client. And these people should be a planner, a creative director, and production. Those three skills are going to be able to do everything. But they have to start on the first step. Because if you ask a creative down the line to fix a problem, it's not going to work. Same thing with a planner. So everything should be, everyone should be around the table on the first meeting. And I like to, to uh, compare the creative process as, you know, archaeologists, the way they, they start looking. Um, before they start working, they, they learn about what's going to be uh, the territory where they're going to start digging. And they learn, they, they, they're see, searching for, uh, are they nomads, are they uh, people, Indians, uh, how they eat, uh, do you have any ritual? So all those questions should be asked before we start to make sure that we have the right territory to start dig in. And like every territory, there's a little rope that you, you have to play in the box. But the reality is that you could move the rope a little bit. So you could move a little bit outside of the brief so you could find other stuff. So sometimes people are saying you have to stay into the brief. I say, stay into the brief, but walk just a little bit around the brief. Because this is where sometimes we find better solution and better creative answers. So the first step is the territory. The second one is that we gather the right skills around the table. And by the way, this is not a religious symbol. That's only two triangle on top of each other. But we like to gather six people around the table and from different skills. So you could have uh, a designer, you could have a copywriter, you could have an architect, you could have a social media planner, you could have a director, and of course you have a creative director that is leading the group. Like at Sidley, we like to embrace a lot of discipline at the same time. That's why in the reel you saw architecture, product design, advertising, branding, technology, and we mix all those people around the table day first. So probably you guys have different skills. And probably the fact that you're from different um, place in Canada, you have different culture, different background, it adds a lot into the creative process. So we have to mix all those culture around the table. So these people are starting to do ideas. And for me, ideas is pretty simple. You need a pen and a piece of paper. At Sidley, we work with post-its. So all the ideas are written on a post-it, and we generate a lot of ideas before we find the good one. Like any archaeologist, when you start digging for ideas, you have to dig really, really deep to make sure that you find the unique one. And this is hard. This is where you have to spend most of your time is finding ideas and finding new ideas. And that's not, com that's not too complex, because you just need paper and pen. That's it. The third stage is that we take those ideas and then we brought them to the table and we start putting computers in our skills. So if you're a writer, you start to write. If you're a director, you start to film. If you're a designer, a painter, uh, and all those artisans are starting to work on the project. Because sometimes ideas take more space and, and express themselves through craft. So the notion of craft is very important at Sidley. So we want to hire the best people in the world to do the best craft. But you don't craft before you have any ideas. And that's, that's the process of thing. And then when you have those ideas on a really nice piece of paper, you need to present it to the client. So 
you have to show your stars to the client. And we call it, this is the presentation. And this is the do or die, because sometimes most of the work is dying on that process. But if we have a go, then we move to production. And production, this is another part where you could add up a lot of craft into it, because suddenly you start working with musicians, you start working with other talents around the planet. Um, you know, in Montreal here, we have a spa called Bata Bata on St. Lawrence. When we, we came up with that, this idea, we said, why don't we create a spa on a boat? That's really fun, but it's not easy to do in production. And this is where the challenge is. Because when you're, you're buying an old ferry from Sorel and you want to convert it into a spa, uh, the production challenge is very, very high. But there's a lot of payoff by doing amazing craft in this process. So it's fairly easy, but what's really hard is the first stage and the last stage. Because this is where sometimes we don't ask ourselves enough question. We don't challenge ourselves. We do the same thing like everyone is doing. And here, the last part is that we don't push ourselves into the making of things. Because when you want to go uh, on March, for an example, or on, on, on the moon, it's easy to have an idea, but it's not easy to build a rocket to go there. <laughs> it's the same thing when Steve Jobs created the iPod, uh, everything was around production. So those two parts are key. And here at Sidley in this space, what we do here in the back is that for stage creative process, we have different rooms. And we do the same process inside those rooms. So the first part is in this room. So we have discussion on the briefing, the challenge, the industry in this room. And then after that, we move all the work that we've done there into this room here. So you see there's a lot of space on the wall. So we use all those walls and we put post-its on it. So this is where the big ideas are up on the wall and we start challenging different ideas on those two walls. And then after that, we move to stage number three, into crafting. So we move into that dark room there. And this is where people are starting with their computers and we're starting to, to work and do the craft. And then on Number four, sometimes we go in that, into that space there. This is a workshop. This is where we build stuff. And uh, the creative process is fairly simple, but it has to be f a physical space. So you could follow the work in, in open space. So you could challenge yourself and say, okay, that was good last night, but tomorrow it might not be that good. And maybe that great idea, the fact that you're starting to craft it, is not that good, but this one is now even better because of that. And sometimes the fact that you're mixing discipline around the table, let's say that you're um, a copywriter, you never design a chair, but it's possible. So the fact that you could have an idea as a writer here, and you could have some help to produce it at the end, makes it possible. So that's why we like to invite all the discipline around the table the first day. Because if you're having a great idea and you're like a social media planner, for an example, and you don't know how to create uh, a restaurant, it's fine. It's fine because we have architects to do that. We have product designers to do that here and here. So it's fairly easy, but the thing is that you have one rule, no ego around the table. Because the minute that you have too much ego and you say, I'm an architect, so I'm God, or I'm working advertising and we're going to do the work and then you guys are going to work after us, it's not going to work at Sidley. So the, the creative culture at Sidley, I like to call it the we culture versus the me culture. And as a creative agency, we're much stronger because we're a collective of people. And if we're a rock star, lonely, creative with egos, it's not gonna work. We do better work because we get inspired by the other peoples. At the agency, there's a lot of people who's got better skills than you. There's people that are really good in topography. There's people that are really good in storytelling. So you could learn from those people. And to be open 
and work as a team makes always better work if you're just one creative on your side. So the minute that you're gonna start a creative project, don't be alone. Gather all your friends, talk about it, do brainstormings, but really fast one, but with people. And then after that, you could go alone and you could craft by yourself. But the minute that you're gonna start talking about ideas, be like today. A lot of people fast brainstorming and go back by yourself after that and start crafting your work. So that's the key. And this is, I believe, the future of a creative process because you guys are way stronger as a collective, as an individual. For me, like finding the right people, it's like finding the right ingredient for your recipe because each project or brand is different. And um, each creative and everybody at the agency has got different background and different interests. So the first thing I do every time I hire someone at the agency, I spend an hour with them to know where they're from, where's their passion, beside work, they do, they, are they a musician? Do they play guitar or whatsoever? Because I could start looking at all those skills. So when there's a project, I could say, okay, I'll take this person with that person, mixing with this writer from Miami and this designer from Sweden, and then it's gonna create the magic. It's like a little recipe. But you have to know your people. Like Gabby and I, we're working at the pond, and the pond, it's like a bunch of young, very talented people, but different talents. So every morning when we look at project, we could say, okay, this one will be better with that person, or this project is good with this guy. And we do that here in Montreal, but sometimes we send creative in Paris to work on project because there are the right skills to do it. So you, you always have to pick the right people for their skills, not the fact that they are available. To work in the creative industry, you have to have tough skin, to be honest, because sometimes you start a project and it, it doesn't mean the team is right, so you have to make quick changes. So usually, we do those changes uh, here on stage number two, because the minute that when we see like people lacking or they don't really understand the direction of the brief, we change them, because we make sure that the ideas are good before we start here. But it's pretty easy, you, are, you, you just have to say it. <laughs> you have to say it and say, maybe you're not the right person to work on this project. It's okay, because there's more projects, there's other projects. So, but I think it's better to tell the truth uh, than waiting and waiting and waiting, and then at the end of the day, the team will let you apart, and you will be alone in your corner, and you will not be happy. <laughs> Like this space, usually in the morning, uh, we have this uh, big table here, and we use the screen uh, to do briefings. So uh, like we have breakfast together, and we have the briefing. So either a client briefing or an agency briefing to the team, but we, uh, we gather all our meeting here in this space to start. And then after that, we move into this space and then the other space. But at the end of the day, we do uh, an intern meeting. So we we took all the work from the wall and we place it on the table here. And then we debate and we select what is the best work. And it, this is, has to be like in a community space here so we could share and together debate on what's good, what's bad, and then take the good work and bring it back to the wall for the next morning. Uh, and sometimes we play here. <laughs> uh, there's a basketball court, but sometimes we do um, we do like live shootings and we rip like bean bags and we fill the place with, with balloons. And uh, so this is a place to, uh, to play, but to play together. It's yeah, it's teamwork, it's teamwork. Um, and there's in this room, um, we have a drum, a piano, and this is where you could play, you could have fun, uh, you could do music if you want. Um, so there's different, space for different reasons. Yeah. Uh, usually the client is involved at the end of stage one. We do um, a tissue session. So we invite the clients in and we have a conversation to make sure that we're going in the right direction. So if the client says, okay, check, we're moving on number two, 
This is only internal. There's no client in this process. Because it's, it's too hard for a client to walk into a room filled with post-its and ideas and to really pick the right one or have a debate or have an open discussion because the craft is not there yet. So usually what we do, we, we keep that stage internally because sometimes you could have like a small ideas and it's easy to kill it, but it might be the best thing in the world. But until you don't have the layer of crafting on it, maybe it's, um, you don't give it the, the ideas the chance to grow. So usually what we do is that we keep that internal and this is where we present to the client. And even sometimes we use uh, this room here in the back with couches uh, and we put all the work on the wall. We invite the clients in and then we lock the door. <laughs> we don't even present. Uh, because I believe that good work don't need to sell, you don't need to sell the work. So the client walks in, look at the work, and slowly they, they're, they're looking at their brand in a different way, and after 20 minutes you walk in, and then the client is selling you the work. <laughs> so um, so I, I think it's, uh, it's always um, selling is not a, when it's, you have to do a hard sell, it means that it's not good. Because I always saying, when's the last time you buy a pair of shoes from someone you don't like? So you, you have to like the, the people that you work with, and it has to be natural. It has, the work has to speak for themselves. But you have to ask questions on st stage number one. Because if you don't have the right budget, um, you don't have the right target or the deadlines or everything that you need to know to start a project, then you could do all that process for nothing because then you end up in the wrong position here into production. So always saying better question here, it's almost the better answer here for production. But this is where there's a lot of stress, there's a lot of money involved sometimes, and when you don't have the experience of building something, it's even more stressful. So it happens a lot when we, um, I remember when we did our first global shoot for Adidas. Uh, there were like helicopters, <laughs> so many people on the shoots. And we were like spending $3 million in 40, 48 hours. So you don't, you don't fuck it up. <laughs> you know? and, and when it's your first time, it's really stressful. But you have to make sure that you're prepared for that moment. And we did a lot of mistakes in the past uh, because uh, based on experience, but sometimes because it didn't exist. So if you, if you need to build something that doesn't exist, there will be some problems, there will be some tight deadlines, and you have to deal with that and just do it to make sure that you could deliver the work. Uh, first of all, you have to uh, put the ideas on the wall to make sure that every idea has got the chance to be expressed and understand by everyone. Uh, and because sometimes people are writing ideas and in their computers or in the, their notebooks and it's really hard to understand an idea. So you have to take the time to explain it. So, and then after that, you, you do a little debate. That's why we use Post-it because when you're using Post-it, it's easy to say, okay, this is the good bucket, the bad bucket, and the maybe, the what if maybe it could happen. So it's easy to work with ideas. So it could be really chaotic, but then after that, you could organize your ideas, saying this is the good bucket, this is the bad bucket. And then you could pull up one post-it, put it in your pocket, and then you arrive at home and show it to your boyfriend. What do you think about that? And then he's going to say, I don't understand. So <laughs> then you say, maybe it's wrong, <laughs> maybe it's not good. And then you could leave it on your, on your uh, fridge. And then the next morning, you look back at your idea, and maybe you say, that's a really good idea. Or maybe, maybe if I tweak it a little bit, it will be better. So working with Post-it is that you could carry ideas, you could organize ideas, and you could validate ideas. But that process takes time, and it has to be a debate. So after that, it's a decision. Because a creative process, at the end of the day, it's making decision. So you're going to start here, and it's, it's really flu. I'll say that in, French, in English, flu? Like vague. Yeah, better. 
Uh, so you're working in the unknown, you know? So like someone is coming uh, and you have a challenge. You say, okay, I have to come up with this campaign or this product and it's, everything is wide open. You could do everything you want. But then you're starting your creative process and you have ideas and then you have to say, okay, which one is the best? And then bring it to this level. And then select, selecting another one and bring it here, maybe another one here, and then until you have one, so it's, it's, you have to make decision in those process, but you have to take the time to make those decisions. This is a good creative process. When it's bad, it's when it's like this. It is like unknown, you're working, you're not making any decision, time is running out, and then you have to select one at the end. And that's worse, that's the worst process. Because you're gonna be stressed, you got, you're probably gonna miss a, a really good one here because you didn't take the time to do like internal meeting and make decisions. So that's why at Sidley in the morning we do the briefing and at the end of the day we do internals meeting. And then we select, the next morning we start back again. So, and sometimes you could start the day working with let's say an architect, and the next day it's gonna be a copywriter. So the fact that you're switching discipline makes you explore different um, territory to make it better. My last point. Uh, how to judge a good idea. Okay. So this is a consumer. So you have to think about Who's gonna like your idea or not? So let's say that it's uh, the consumer is uh, a 13-year boy and girl, uh, and they are buying running shoes, for an example. So you have to think about your target, and then you have to say, okay, we have to make sure that that person has got a smile in the mind, because when something is unique. If it's, a, it's an ad, an app, or a space, as a consumer, you're gonna say, wow, that's cool. I never s saw that before. Well, if it's the first time that you walk into a restaurant, your first reaction will be, okay, I like this space, I don't like this space. But it's gonna happen here. So we need to do something that it's unique and different. So the consumer could say, okay, you got my interest. Then after that, you need to put emotion. Because if we do something without emotion, we're not gonna touch you. And I mean by emotion, you could, you could smile, you could laugh, you could cry if you see an ad. But it's the same thing if you walk into a space in an hotel and you could smell, or the first time that you open a packaging, or you're uh, playing with uh, an application. This is an emotion, because you're gonna say it's good, it's bad, and sometimes it's gonna trigger something inside of you. And everything that we do at Sidley, we like to cr create emotion of, if it's a chair, if it's an ad, if it's a brand, it has to be emotion around that brand. And then after that, it takes balls. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and, and this is where, um, when you look at ideas, sometimes you have to look at ideas, say, is it like a very unique idea that will transform the industry, transform the experience? And it takes balls sometimes to say, okay, that's good. And that has never been done before, but that's good. So you have to step up sometimes and ask creative people, and you guys, probably, you will have to present and defend your ideas. And this is where you have to express yourself loud and clear that it's the way to go. And it's gonna be, in your career, it's gonna happen all the time. All the time. The minute that you're gonna have something that it's unique and different, it, that doesn't exist, people will like to kill it. Because it's, it's scarier to do something that doesn't exist than repeat something that's already existing. So it takes balls sometimes. And I believe that the good work is, you need bravery to do good work. And then after that, you need to create transaction. You make sure that the consumer is walking into the store and is buying 
the running shoe, or is liking or sharing something on social media. So for me, transaction is very, very important. Because if you look, if, you, if you're cutting this part here, like this is art, and this is commercial. So if you're cutting this part, we're only doing art. We're not selling commercial creativity. And if we're cutting this part, we're doing bad brand experience, the kind that we don't like and we want to destroy, the kind that's around our buses and billboards and really bad TV ads. So for me, uh, it has to be a mix of those two worlds. And that's really important. I think the art part is, is key because we're a human being and we want to, to be entertained and uh, we want to be surprised and we want to feel things. And for me, that's not easy to do because to, to make, uh, to go out there and create something different and a unique experience, you need to have a lot of culture and art experience into, a, into that. This for me, it's only about transaction. It's about making money. So this part, yes, you need intelligence, you need emotion and bravery, and this is the hard part of what we do. And I'm sure that you guys are working on different projects right now, and at the end of the day, it's to make a transaction or help someone to have a better life. But if you don't put intelligence in it and you don't touch the people around that brand or that project, and if you don't have any bravery, you're not gonna succeed. So that's why this part is so important. Yes, just do the do. <laughs> because sometimes we, we think about stuff, but we don't do. We talk about stuff with our friends and our family. I want to do this, I want to do that, but you don't really actually do. But if you wake up one morning and you just do what you have to do, you will come to bed at night and you will learn something about your project and you're gonna be able to make decision if it's a, it's a good one or a bad one. Then the next morning, you wake up again, and you do, and then you do, and then you do, and at the end of the day, you will succeed because you're actually doing. Most of the entrepreneur, um, they, don't, they don't do, they just talk about project. Last night, I went to uh, a dinner, and someone came to me and said, um, we have these crazy ideas, and uh, we need some money uh, to make it happen. I say, okay, could you show it to me? Well, we, no, we didn't really actually made it, uh, but we're thinking about it. We want to have the money first and then do after. That's wrong. You have to do first and then the money will come. So you just have to do whatever you have to do, you do. Just do the do, okay? <laughs> so now I'll go back and do the do. <laughs> Thank you.